I'm Dr. Rachel Dolan, a movement disorder specialist and vice president of medical communications at the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. Today I'll be talking about dyskinesia. Dyskinesia can be thought of as too much or extra movement. It's an abnormal, involuntary, uncontrolled movement. It can occur in one individual body part, like an arm or the head, or it can involve the entire body. It can look like fidgeting, writhing, or wriggling, or like head bobbing or body swaying. It doesn't occur in everybody with Parkinson's, and in those who do have it, it can occur to different degrees of severity. Dyskinesia tends to occur during times when other Parkinson's symptoms like tremor, stiffness, and slowness are otherwise well controlled. Some people with dyskinesia will say it's bothersome or painful or even interferes with their daily activities. Other people with dyskinesia say that they prefer it to otherwise being rigid or unable to move because of their Parkinson's. Dyskinesia typically occurs as a complication of long-term use of levodopa combined with a prolonged course of Parkinson's disease. Other factors that contribute to dyskinesia include a younger age at diagnosis and using higher dosages of levodopa for prolonged periods of time. Researchers believe that several different brain chemicals may be involved, and in particular that fluctuations in the levels of the brain chemical dopamine are to blame. In Parkinson's, the brain cells that make dopamine are lost, so levels of dopamine fall over time. Levodopa temporarily replaces dopamine, but because of the way that it has to be taken, which is usually several times per day, the levels of dopamine rise and fall. If you have dyskinesia, there are several treatment options you may consider discussing with your personal physician. You might think about changing the dosage of levodopa or how often you take it. You might consider changing to an extended release formulation of levodopa or a continuous infusion of levodopa. You also may consider deep brain stimulation. This is a surgical procedure that is sometimes used to target dyskinesia and other symptoms of Parkinson's. Because of the potential for dyskinesia, many people, especially those who are younger at diagnosis, wonder if and when they should take levodopa. A good general rule of thumb is to consider medication if your symptoms are interfering with your ability to perform your daily activities, to exercise, interact socially, or they're just interfering with your overall quality of life. There are other medications to treat Parkinson's, so sometimes those are used first or instead of levodopa, but again, this is a conversation to have with your personal provider so that you can find what fits best for you in your personal situation. Much research is ongoing to find new and better treatments for dyskinesia. There are several medications in the pipeline that are looking at the brain chemicals and pathways thought to be involved in dyskinesia and aim to control the levels of dopamine and keep them more constant in the system. There are also trials investigating surgical therapies, including deep brain stimulation and focused ultrasound. You can learn more about dyskinesia and other topics in Parkinson's by visiting our website.